All right, let's see what this question is asking. Segment HI, hi, has an endpoint at negative 2, 5 and a midpoint at 3, 8. What is the length of each HI to the nearest hundred? So let's see what information we have. We have an endpoint and a midpoint. Let's draw the segment. And on purpose, I am not going to draw it flat because I know that this is 2D. This is not 1D. This is not a number line. This is coordinate plane. Okay? So we've got H, we've got I, and then we know the midpoint, pretend that's in the middle, is M. One of the endpoints is at negative 2, 5. I'm not plotting this. I'm just kind of sketching a picture. So sometimes it helps to take the word and put it into picture form, especially for our visual learners. Now, what are we even trying to find? Are we trying to find the coordinates of I? Are we trying to find the distance from H to M? We need her to. We want to find the length of HI. And I tried to talk about last week. The length of a segment is the exact same thing as finding the distance from endpoint to endpoint. So we're trying to find the length of HI. Who has an idea? So Sharon said you could find the other endpoint. You could find this endpoint. And then you could find the distance from H to I. I argue, though, that there's one quicker way to do that. Okay, very good. Another way to do it, I'm not saying that one way is better than the other, but another way to do it is to find the distance from H to M, find the distance from H to M, and then double it. To me, that's kind of one less step. We're not even going to use leapfrog. We're not even going to find the coordinates of I, because we know if M really is the midpoint, then the distance from H to M is equal to the distance from M to I. So we can find HM and we can double it. What did y'all get for your answer? Good. Okay, so I taught you to draw the skeleton first of the distance formula. And then we talked about how the circles go together and the underlines go together. Put your X's together and put your Y's together. It doesn't matter which one you put first, but if you're going to go with this point first, you have to go with it first both times. So I'm going to put circle minus circle, and then underline minus underline. You're allowed to go straight to your calculator from here. You do not have to show those intermediate steps. A little bit more fractional distance, because we didn't have a lot of time to do it in our last lesson. And then we're going to construct a perpendicular bisector with a compass. So get your notes out. And let's look at this top. On the number line, Given point x at negative 2, let's always have a 0 here, point x at negative 2 and point y at 14, find a point q such that q equals 1 8 of x, y. This problem is like child's play after we've already done that homework, right? This problem is easy. So we're actually going to treat this problem just like we did on the homework. We're going to find our delta. We're going to find our change. We're going to find the length. What is the distance from negative 2 to 14? Traveling 16, right? And then I only want to go 1 eighth of the way. I don't want to go half of the way. I don't want to go a fourth of the way. I only want to go 1 eighth of the way. So I can simply multiply it times 1 eighth. And what do you get? Oh my goodness, I already plotted the answer without even meaning to. <laughs> so 16 times 1 8 is 2. So I'm going to start at my coordinate. We did that on the homework. I'm going to start there. And I'm going to travel 2. Kind of silly. And that's where Q was meant to go all along. Okay, now let's try it two-dimensionally. Now I'll try this problem. Now, we don't have a graph here, so we can kind of sketch our own graph, but we're not going to be doing any counting. Let's see, C is at negative 5, negative 4. Let's just pretend that's what that is. Negative 5, negative 4. And D is at 3, 8. So I'm sketching. 
testing it to give me an idea of where these points fall, what quadrant are they in, where am I traveling when I travel from C to D. But I'm not going to do any counting of squares. We're going to use the coordinates instead. Find the coordinates of the point that is three-fourths of the way from C to D. Now, I realize that because it's three-fourths of the way, yes, I could find the midpoint, and then I could find another midpoint, right? So if I wanted to, let's just eyeball this. I could find a midpoint once. It would have some coordinates. And then I could find a midpoint of these two coordinates right here. And I would have the point that's three-fourths of the way. But because I want you to have more practice with fractional distance, I want to do it the way that we did on the homework. Except this one will be free. Because I made it up myself. Okay, here we go. So, what did we do first? If we want to find the fractional distance, what do we do first? Find the rise and the run, the delta x and the delta y. Yay! Exactly what I wanted to hear. Okay, let's do delta y first. I look at my y values. I'm traveling, well, I usually have one. I'm traveling from negative 4 to 8. We did that when we did the approximate homework. I'm traveling from negative 4 to 8. How far am I traveling? 12. Now let's do the x's. I'm traveling from negative 5 to 3. How far am I traveling? 8. So, up 12, over 8. I don't want to go up 12 and over 8 anymore. I want to go 3 fourths of the way up and 3 fourths of the way over. So, we're going to find out what 3 fourths of both of these are. And it's going to be beautiful. 3 fourths of the way from C to D. So, what's my starting point? My starting point is C. So, I'm going to start at C, which is negative 5, negative 4. All right, let's find our delta x and delta y. They're beautiful. What is delta x? 8 times 3 fourths. You're getting, you're getting them a little bit mixed up. Be careful. 8 times 3 fourths is 6. I'm going to do that to my x value. Keep your x's and y's separate. That's how much we're running now. We're running 6. Um, and then 12 times 3 fourths is 9. So I'm going to go up to 9. So where am I going to land? Negative 5 plus 6? 1. Negative 4 plus 9? So that is the answer. If I were to plot it, so let's see, 1, 5. Oh my goodness, it looks like it would be right in the perfect spot. Okay? So that's actually all I'm going to say about fractional distance. We did 1, 2D. We did one 1D when we did the number line, and then we worked some from the homework. Okay, so we're going to take a break from numbers real quick, and we're going to do some constructions. So it's actually my favorite construction. It's constructing a perpendicular bisector. What we're doing this for is we're trying to find the midpoint. So today's whole goal is to find the midpoint of a segment without ever measuring the segment. Find the midpoint without ever measuring it. First, let's review. Number one says, construct a segment congruent to AB. That's called copying a segment. That's a review. We already did that last unit. You put your needle on one endpoint and your pencil on the other. Then you come down to your ray. You put your needle on the endpoint and you make an arc. Pretend I did that with some more finesse than I really did. Where the arc intersects the segment, it says to call it C prime. And this is my answer. I constructed a segment congruent to the one above. Okay, number two. Here's where we're going to do something new. We are going to construct a perpendicular bisector. That means perpendicular, that means bisector. Like I said, this is so cool. It's my favorite one. The perpendicular bisector is going to help us find a midpoint. Bisector and midpoint are very similar terms. A midpoint is a bisector. Okay, so step one. 
I want you to open your compass more than halfway. So that is step one. Open more than halfway. Open your compass greater than halfway from CC. You put your needle on the end point and you make a nice big arc. Is it going to be messy? Yes, it is. Are you going to bleed into your other problems? Yes, you are. Now, with the same compass setting, same setting, you're going to take the needle and you're going to put it on the other end point. Now I'm going to put it on C. My arc is going to be going the opposite way. Ooh, look at that. See that? I didn't change my compass setting. So I put my needle on point D, then I put my needle on point C, and I made some intersecting arcs. Last step. Take a straight edge, remember not a ruler, take a straight edge and connect this point where the arcs met to this point where the arcs met. Connect those points. You have constructed a perpendicular phi sector. And where that segment hits your segment at the intersection, that is the exact middle. That is the midpoint of your segment. Now, how could you check to see if it's the midpoint? Well, you could measure, oh, all the way across is 6, and my midpoint's at 3. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. Okay, I checked with my ruler. Or you could even check with patty paper. You could sketch your segment on the patty paper. And then you could take that segment, right? You could fold it where the end point touches the end point. Crease it. All right, that crease is my middle. Put it back on top of here. Oh, look how beautiful that is. Oh, my goodness. So we just talked about three ways to find the midpoint of a segment. We just talked about three ways. Three ways we could find the midpoint of a segment. So one of the ways that we learned in class today is construct a perpendicular bisector. Another way is to measure with a ruler, right? And divide by two. And then another way is to use patty paper, tracing paper, and crease that tracing paper. All right, the next one says, Construct the perpendicular bisector of ST. So let's watch again. Step one, open my compass more than halfway. Now, can I open it past the other end point? No, do not open it past the other end point. You have to be between the middle and the other end point. So you can't go past the segment. So I'm constructing, I'm making an arc. Now I'm moving my needle to the other end point. And making, oops, and making another arc. Remember, some people like to twist the paper, and some people like to twist the compass. Where those arcs meet up, you take your straight edge and you connect those dots to one another. This segment is called the perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular means 90 degrees, and bisector means cut in half, and now I have also found the midpoint of ST. Okay, that is the same thing. Let's look at the back. Let's look at one more. Ooh, divide AB into four congruent parts. You can imagine what happens here, right? So I'm going to construct a perpendicular bisector. Oops, that didn't look like more than halfway, so I'm going to adjust it. I need to make sure I give myself room for these arcs to intersect. If I didn't open it more than halfway, those arcs may never meet, and then I would be in trouble. All right, so I have constructed, about to have, constructed one perpendicular bisector. Now, I don't need to draw the whole line. Can I just draw a little tick mark there? Sure. I'll call it C. And now I need to divide it into four congruent parts. 
So I'm going to construct the perpendicular bisector of the new segment. Am I going to have a lot of arcs in my picture? Yes, I am. Is it going to be messy? Yes, and it should be. If your picture isn't messy, you weren't constructing. You were using your ruler to see if your picture is not messy. Get the idea? Isn't that kind of fun? You can find the middle of something without ever measuring it. Did you see how that one? See how I didn't totally touch? I need to go back and do that again. I put my needle here again. I have to force them to touch. They need to intersect twice for me to really get a good midpoint here. Cool. All right. So I have now divided AB into four congruent sections. One, two, three, four. And if I took patty paper and I traced one of them, these segments should all be the same length. That should match that. Check. Should match that. Check. Should match that. Yay! Okay, we're going to end the lesson with a bit of a challenging problem. A bit of a challenging distance problem. The distance between C and D is 13. C is negative 3, 8, and D is 9, comma, uh oh. That's a variable. Why? Solve for Y. So it's kind of one of those Jeopardy problems where I give you the answer, you know the answer, and you have to work backwards. Okay, so what I would recommend is start with the distance formula. I am told that the distance is 13. It is 13. So draw your skeleton of your distance formula and set it equal to 13. Now we're going to go back to what we normally do. Circle our x's and underline our y's. And remember, it doesn't matter what order you enter them into the distance formula, but you need to be consistent. I'm going to start here. So I'm going to need to start here both times. Circle minus circle. Underline minus underline. I did that on purpose because I wanted my y to be positive. I wanted my variable to be positive. So I wanted to write it first instead of second. Okay. Let's clean this up a little bit because I know I can do some work here. So 13 equals square root of 9 minus negative 3 is 12. 12 squared is 144. That's the one. Okay. So what did we do first? Step one, I just cleaned up something. I just subtracted and squared it. Okay. Now we need to solve for y. We're about to have an algebra review. But to solve for a variable, you want to do the opposite of what's being done to it. Right now, it's being square rooted. So the opposite of square rooting something, how do you get rid of a square root? Well, you square both sides. 13 squared is 169. The square and the square root are going to cancel. And we're going to have what was under the square root. We are going to have what was under the square root. Are we okay so far? Now we need to start moving things away from y. Get them away. Get them to the other side because we want to isolate y. The opposite of positive 144 is negative 144. 169 minus 144, 25. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. Now, uh-oh, I've got this square to deal with. I need to do the opposite of squaring something. The opposite of squaring something is square rooting. These will cancel. And Miss Tanton did something wrong right there on purpose. The square root of 25 is not just 5. Do you know what the square root of 25 is? Good. Hopefully you've inherited that from your other math. Plus or minus 5. Because 5 squared is 25. But negative 5 squared is also 25. So that's important. This problem is going to have two answers. Okay. So now we need to solve both of these. 5 equals y minus 8. And then the other answer is negative 5. Yeah, I split that up. 
that up because there were two of them here. Now you just solve for y. Add 8 to both sides. Y is 13. Add 8 to both sides. Y is 3. So the answer to the problem is y equals 3 and 13. If you're curious why there's two answers, I want to show you because I think it gives you a lot of insight into the problem and what you're actually trying to do in the problem. Okay. Oh. That's better. Okay. So, go full screen. So we have a coordinate plane. C is at negative 3, 8. Or so that's 8. So there's C. And I don't know where D is. But I know 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. It's somewhere at the coordinate 9. I don't know where it is. What I do know is that CD is 13. So what this problem is saying is that D could either be here or here. Because the distance from here to here is 13, and the distance from here to here is 13. Where are those values? 3 and 13. Does that kind of make sense? In order to travel to that dotted line, I could travel 13 in this direction, or I could travel 13 in this direction. So that's why there's two answers. That length is C, the length is 13, both ways. So this is option number one, and this is option number two. D had to lie on that line, but there were two ways to travel to that line and travel 13 units.